Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We turn our focus now to cricket and the men's 50 over World Cup hosts India are through to the final after beating New Zealand by 70 runs in the first semi final at the Wankhede Stadium earlier on Wednesday. After electing to bat, India posted 397 for four from their 50 overs with Virat Kohli top scoring with 117, his 50th ODI century, which is the most by any player. Kohli got support from Shreyas Iyer, who smashed 105, the quickest 100 in a World Cup semi-final. That came off 67 balls. Tim Southey was the pick of the New Zealand bowlers with three for 100. New Zealand, in reply, were dismissed for 327 in 48.5 overs. Mavimach Mohamed Shami bagging 7 for 57 to counter Daryl Mitchell's brilliant 134. Australia and South Africa will contest the second semi-final on Thursday with a championship match set for Sunday. Now, one of the biggest takeaways from today's semi-final is Virat Kohli breaking Sachin Tendulkar's record for the most ODI hundreds. It took Tendulkar 451 innings to notch 49 centuries, while it has taken Kohli 279 innings to reach 50. So the debate intensifies. Is Virat Kohli a better ODI player than Tendulkar? A quick look at their ODI record suggests Kohli is a clear winner, but not everything boils down to statistics. Uh, Kohli there, 279 innings, 1,394 runs, and uh, Tendulkar from 452 innings, significantly more uh, batting performances from Tendulkar 18,426. So joining us now to add to this discussion is international cricket correspondent Fazir Mohammed. Faz, um, two giants in India's batting history, uh, Sachin Tendulkar, widely regarded as the master, but is Virat Kohli, based on his statistics, beginning to enter the conversation? I would say he's entered the conversation quite some time ago, Lance. And even if he never got to a 50th one the International 100, uh, you mentioned some of those numbers there. Uh, the pace at which he got uh, to the 50th one the International Century. Uh, Tindulka would have spent quite a lot of this time at the top of the order uh, for, for India. And and yes, when, you, when you're comparing these individuals, you're comparing truly great players. Uh, and therefore, because we're talking about the one-day format in this particular instance, I would have to say that even before he got to that 50th, which he might have gotten earlier, because remember, he had a couple of chances earlier in this World Cup to get to 100s and missed out uh, for different reasons. Uh, but, but I would say, yes, when you look at every aspect of it, not just the numbers, but the ability of Kohli to take his team to victory, the way he plays the game, the way he, he rallies players around him, he, he energizes the person he's batting with, just the way that he plays, uh, I think in many different levels, apart from the numbers as well, I would say that, that Kohli is ahead of the game when it comes to comparisons in one-day cricket with Sachin Tendulkar. Yeah, I hear you emphasizing one-day cricket because we're just talking about the 50-over format um, because overall, as a batsman, um, maybe people wouldn't consider the gap or the discussion as, as riveting, would it? I think that's where it becomes more complicated. It's the same as saying, well, you know, everyone talks about Tendulkar and Kohli. But if you really want to talk about the greatest Indian batsman, it's Sunil Gavaskar because of the amount of runs he made, who he made them against, the quality of the opposition, the weakness of India. Uh, but again, he didn't play much one-day cricket, didn't play any T20 cricket. So, so that's why it's always difficult comparing eras. And when you talk about a Tendulkar, uh, what a, a test career that spanned 1989 to 2013, and then, then you bring in Virat Kohli, 2010 to the present time, different eras, different times. You could talk about India being a very strong team now. You could talk about Tendulkar being part of a batting lineup that included Sewa, who's just made the Hall of Fame, VVS Lakshman, Surav Ganguly, Rahul Dravid, and, and so many more. So there are many different variables to it. So I think it gets much more complicated when you bring in the test element or even the leadership element. 
uh, because again, Tenduka wasn't considered a particularly good leader. We saw that right here in the Caribbean in 1997. In contrast, Coley seems to bring the best out of his players in whatever format. So yes, there are many different variables, but I suppose for what it's worth, we're discussing the 50 over format this time. Yeah, and I, I guess Sachin gave up the captaincy as well because um, he just recognized that he wasn't, that wasn't his thing. He just wanted to concentrate on his batting. You just put um, Sunil Gavaskar on a pedestal there, um, Faz, and I don't want to depart too much from this current ODI discussion, but I remember Michael holding on several um, occasions, suggesting that he thought that uh, Sunil Gavaskar was overrated uh, because I think personally of the kind of success he and his four-prong West Indies pace attack had against uh, Sunil Gavaskar um, in, in history. Not that he didn't score against them, but... I, I've heard Michael Holding suggest that Gavaskar was overrated. I'm not sure if you heard the great uh, whispering death say that. And I understand that perspective because when you look at Gavaskar's 1300s against the West Indies, when he had that first series in 1971, there were no four fast bowlers at the time. You had Newton Dow, Van Ben Holder, uh, a few others who were just, were just there, thereabouts. Uh, then 1976, it was Michael Holding, Andy Roberts. The great quartets uh, only came into being in the latter half of the 1970s. Gavaskar scored 400 against the West Indies in 78, 79, when all of the top fast bowlers were playing Kerry Packer cricket. But there was a Malcolm Marshall just coming onto the scene. Sylvester Clark was part of it, but they were emerging cricketers. Uh, and, and again, there's always that argument about home umpires. Because once more, when Gavaskar in 1983-84, where the West Indies won that series 3-0, got 194 balls, the West Indies were convinced that they'd gotten him more than once. Then later on in that series, batting at number four, he got 236, the highest score by an Indian at that time. And again, the West Indies were convinced that they had him uh, earlier on in the course of that innings. But, but yes, I, I can understand that point, but again, when you look at the, the number of runs you scored overall, not just against the West Indies, averaging over 50 in a very difficult era for batsmen, no helmets and, and all that sort of thing, I think Gavaskar must be in the consideration. Mm. Yeah, all right. Um, just to quickly go back to the, the, the Sachin and um, Virat Kohli comparison, because generally speaking, Although the stats are suggesting here that in ODI cricket, Kohli has to get the nod, uh, we do get the feeling that because Sachin Tendulkar is so highly regarded and, and embraced as, as the, the little, little master, um, a lot of it is, is emotional from some of Sachin's fans who wouldn't want to um, get into any uh, discussion about anyone challenging the little master. Indeed, and, and you can understand why. Because Tendulkar was loved for so long. Remember, he came onto the scene as a 16-year-old. The same test match that Wakar Yunus made his test debut in Karachi, 1989. Two outstanding cricketers. And played all the way until 2013. And when you recall the emotion of India winning the World Cup in India at the Wankhede Stadium where the semi-final was just played, defeating Sri Lanka, and it seemed it was all about winning for Sachin. Virat Kohli said it, Yuvrat Singh said it, almost everyone in the team, Mahendra Singh Dhoni, it was almost all about doing it for Sachin Tendulkar. And you, again, you can understand why. Usually, when a, a player of that stature, like a Viv Richards, for example, when, when they, they leave the scene, that stature grows. It, it, it's almost, it, it becomes almost godlike. Uh, which might sound sacrilegious to many, but the fact is that the, the, the thing is that Sachin Tendulkar can do no more, no wrong anymore. His numbers are there. Virat Kohli is still out there. And remember, Virat Kohli was disliked by many for his very abrasive way, which actually Viv Richards admired, and you can understand why as well, because of the way they play the game. Yeah. So yes, the, the, the fact that Tendulkar is looking on almost with a halo around him while Kohli does these great things, for many it will be almost an offense to suggest that Kohli is displacing Tendulkar from the top of the pedestal. But that's what the game is about. That's what sport is all about. Yeah, I'm always uh, 
uh, appreciate your input in the show, the, the, uh, uh, the, the genius Fazir Mohammed. Faz, we'll talk again soon because the South Africa-Australia match tomorrow is expected to be gripping. And then the final, whatever happens this weekend, will also be memorable, I think. We'll talk again soon. Sure, take care. Yeah, back with more on The Zone after this.